And I think having, having that really strong why um, is really, really important because it's really going to push that discipline to actually take the step and do the thing and like start the new habit. <laughs> Amy, I'm so excited to be chatting with you today. Uh, I'd love what you're working on. Uh, but for those who don't know, maybe explain to us a bit about what you do and um, how you got here. Yeah, absolutely. So first off, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to chat with you. Um, so my name is Amy C. Willis. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a dual certified sobriety and mindset coach. And I work predominantly with women and those within the LGBTQ plus community who are interested in entering and sustaining sobriety and ultimately building lives that they love and don't want to escape from. And I came to this work, I've been working professionally as a coach for almost four years. Um, and I came to this work after struggling with a pretty severe alcohol addiction myself for many years. Um, so I've been coaching now for almost four years. I founded my company Whole and Well in June 2019. And in addition to being a coach, I'm also a speaker and a writer. I'm a certified EFT practitioner and a meditation teacher. And those are modalities and, and tools that I bring to my work with my clients. Um, I've been sober for more than six years now. I am queer. I love reading and hiking and cycling and cross stitch as we talked about briefly. And maybe your analogy can, can come in because I think it's really great. Um, and I have an 18 year old cat named captain. Uh, I currently am based in Toronto, Canada, and my coaching practice is virtual. So I get to work with folks everywhere, which is really great. First of all, I love all that you stand for and everything that you, you work with and sort of all the people you work with and the work you're doing, uh, because I've, I've been in the advertising industry for over, you know, a decade, um, dozen years i lose count of time but um for a very mm -hmm. long time and in the advertising industry it's very much um a heavy drinking um culture and that's sort of like yeah. where i had struggles with alcohol and consuming way too much of it way too frequently mm -hmm. and it was a bit of an escapism like you said for me um uh, it yeah. took a very a lot of willpower and a lot of um, support around me to to stay sober or be sober and stay sober. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I want to kind of get a little peek behind the curtains. You know, um, what inspired you to start this, um, you know, start this entrepreneurial journey, and sort of what's um, what type of work do you enjoy doing within? within this um, scope? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say initially my, my biggest inspiration and motivation to start my business and this business in particular was the drive that I felt for as long as I can remember to really help people make their lives better. Um, and that continues to inspire me and motivate me today. And then also my own experiences in, in finding sobriety um, and learning how to sustain it and learning how to support myself in real authentic ways so that I no longer needed to look to alcohol to be a solution for whatever it was that I was dealing with in my life. And so my own experiences with sobriety, like it's been life-saving, it's been life-changing, and then coupled with just wanting people to live the lives that they want to live and having that, mm -hmm. that really strong desire, um, that really is, is how I got to do what I'm doing. So once I got clear on how I wanted to help people, um, I got a bunch of training. I got a bunch of coaching training. I got a bunch of additional certifications. So I actually had the tools, uh, to support people in creating change in their lives. 
And then I built my company. Yeah. And I think um, maybe a good starting point is like that cross-stitch analogy I talked about earlier, where um, Mm -hmm. for cross-stitch, everything looks, you know, amazing. It looks beautiful on the, on the front. And then Mm -hmm. that's what a lot of people just see, right? But mm-hmm. as the person creating or for those who are curious enough, when they turn it around, everything looks a bit messy or what we consider messy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I, I think part of my experience with sobriety or like the addiction aspect, it was um, there was a point in time in my life where everything you know, fell in place. I had a good job, good salary, mm-hmm. um, lots of you know, nice material things. Uh, but on be, beyond the surface, so again, on the other side of the cross stitch pattern, um, mm-hmm. I, I felt like there was a lot of things that are messy and, and mm-hmm. coming to terms with that and realizing that was such a light bulb moment. And, and you talk about, you know, helping your clients change and make a positive change in their life. Uh, mm-hmm. Are there moments where um, that stick out to your mind, kind of like the high points where you've helped clients to kind of realize this and and kind of help them along because uh, you know sometimes the first thing is just identifying right so maybe talk to us a bit about your experiences there mm-hmm. yeah so I mean by the time people reach out to somebody like me um, they are usually pretty clear that alcohol is not working in their lives and as you mm-hmm. say like I had a very similar experience um everything externally looked great. Like I had a good job. I was, I had a partner, lots of friends, socializing, traveling, all of the stuff. Um, and internally it was a hot mess. Um, and my mental health was impacted and my mood was impacted and it just kind of started bleeding into everything. Um, and for me, and I think similarly for a lot of my clients, they get to a point where, they are clear that this thing is not working for them and it's making parts of their lives so much worse and they know that they want it to be different and they know that they want it to be better and they don't know how to get there. Um, and that's when I, I enter the picture and they reach out to me. Um, so I think there's already that clarity in place by the time they get there. And then mm-hmm. it's just figuring out like, great. So you know what you don't like, you know, what's not working. Let's talk about a vision for what you want your life to look like. So we have something that we're moving towards, and then we can address the parts of your life that are supporting alcohol staying present in your life. And let's talk about the other areas of your life and your world that need a bit of love and need a bit of care um, so that we can get you closer to where you want to go and not have alcohol be part of that vision. Yeah. And I think I see a lot of parallels with, um, you know, people struggling with addiction to even entrepreneurship, where um, mm-hmm. a lot of people, they don't have the tools around them to help them. Uh, you know, for example, in business, um, you may be running in a very successful business, um, but you may lack like a particular skill where you need to mm-hmm. maybe hire someone to help you out with with. And I see this parallel in, um, in what you do as well. So it sounds like people recognize that and they, they know that they may not be fully equipped by themselves to help them out. um, out. And I, I count myself lucky because again, I had a good support network um, Mm -hmm. and my wife fully supported and was able to kind of um, help me work through a lot of those um, issues. And we talked a lot during that period. I'm fairly good at introspection. So that that I think um, helped a lot, but sort of um, you talked a bit about your different certifications and whatnot. Um, talk me through some of the things that you are now equipped yourself with that may um, be present for those who may not have these um, other tools around themselves, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, can you ask that question in a different way? Yeah, maybe maybe brag a little bit about yourself on on some of the things oh. that you've learned <laughs> that can help other people uh, that may not Got have it. these okay. particular skills. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah. So as I mentioned, um, I also am an EFT practitioner, and that stands for emotional freedom techniques, and that is a somatic, self administered. Um, tool that people can use to change the way our body responds to different stressors. 
So I, I can get into that a little bit more later if, if we want. Um, I'm also a meditation teacher. So I do a lot around mindfulness based practices. I do a lot around, um, understanding and recognizing our thoughts and training our brains essentially around how we engage with our thoughts. Um, so, you know, some of the pillars, I guess I would say of my coaching practice are mindset and, and beliefs, uh, transformation. So really actually addressing like the things that we believe to be true about ourselves, about our capacity, about, uh, the role alcohol plays in our lives, um, and really working through some of the limiting beliefs that might be keeping you attached to this thing. Uh, so we do a lot around that, a lot of brain training, essentially, um, I do a lot around habit change with people. Um, I've received a ton of training around habit and habit change. And so again, not just the habit of drinking, but the habits that surround um, your you know, drinking practices or drinking behaviors um, and really taking things apart that are not supportive of the life you wanna be living and building new habits and putting them in place. Um, I also do a lot of around resiliency building. So resiliency is like a muscle and mm -hmm. we all have the capacity to strengthen it. And, you know, as you can probably relate to, it, you know, the idea that essentially what I like to do with my clients is get them to a place where they believe that they have the capacity to handle any challenge that comes their way. And that is resiliency. And so I do a resiliency assessment at the beginning and the end of my time with my clients just to demonstrate to them what they've done and how they have strengthened their resiliency. Um, so that's sort of a little bit around what I what I do and some of the tools that I use. And these are all tools that I found to be incredibly helpful for me. And that's not to say that they necessarily will work for everybody. I think everybody's approach to recovery and sobriety is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, but my clients have found great success with them as well. And I think that's, you know, one of the benefits of working with a coach is, you know, you can really accelerate your results and you can get there a lot quicker because you aren't slogging through it on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we all have the capacity, right? I think we all can figure it out. Um, for me, I didn't work with anybody. I didn't use a program to get sober. And the first year was really messy and really bumpy. And I would have loved to hire someone like me who would take me by the hand and walk me through something that actually works and is evidence-based. And then I leave it with new habits and new tools and new ways of being and a changed relationship to alcohol. So, yeah, so it's a bit about how I work with clients and what some of the tools and pillars are. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, um, and I draw this parallel because um, back in school, I was a, I was in varsity team and a lot of people, um, I play badminton, uh, competed mm -hmm. in badminton. A lot of people think, oh, badminton is such a like a physical sport. You'll, um, you know, you train a lot in terms of like, you know, how to hit a birdie or like you train your footwork. But a lot of people, discount how important um because you mentioned mindset and um you know training the brain a lot of people discount how important it is to have like a routine or like um training your mind for competition as well because yeah. um i know firsthand it's very different what you know when you're training uh three to you know six hours a day on a daily basis playing a game after you know for training versus playing a game in a tournament is completely different in your mind and mm -hmm. um it's surprising how like as you progress how much more importance that mental aspect is and it's not just you know the physical so in your case the physical aspect of like oh let's remove yourself from you know alcohol or in the presence of alcohol mm -hmm. or like you know um physically not drinking but then it's it, yep. it really does come down to kind of a lot of the mental aspects around that so i i really appreciate uh, yeah. what you just talked about um one thing i want to talk about is sort of you mentioned resiliency right and uh, and in my mind um that also kind of is linked to um you know forming new habits and uh discipline so mm -hmm. in with your practice and also your i, I guess like what you see in your clients versus um, 
your business, you know, you're actually running your business. What are some mm-hmm. parallels can you draw in terms of like this, this aspect of, of uh, habit forming or, um, you know, being more uh, resilient to a particular thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that, yeah, the discipline and habits and resiliency, I think they all work together and I think they all serve a different purpose. So I think discipline is really, really needed at the beginning of any kind of change, right? When you are uh, quitting drinking, when you were starting to flex your resiliency muscles, when you are starting to build new habits, it is going to require building a business, right? It is going to require a huge amount of discipline. But I think even before we get to the place of looking at discipline, we need to one, make a rock solid decision that like, this is the thing that we're going to do, right? If we go into anything in a wishy-washy way, like it's just not going to work. But I think the next piece to that is, for me, and I think that this is true in business, this is true in sobriety, really connecting to your why. So like, why are you building this business? Why does it matter? Why are you doing it now? What difference does it make? Why do you want to get sober? What is the big picture here? Is it related to health? Are you trying to, um, positively impact your sleep, your uh, mental health, your physical health, your relationships? Are you wanting to save money? Are you wanting to not be hung over anymore? Like what's actually, what's the reason? And I think having, having that really strong why um, is really, really important because it's really going to push that discipline to actually take the step and do the thing and like start the new habit. And, you know, when the bumps in the road come and whether it's building a business or sobriety, they will come, there will be bumps in the road and lots of challenges along the way that are going to make you want to quit. They're going to make you want to revert back to your old ways of doing things. And so having that really strong connection and being rooted in your why feels really, really important. And then I think the discipline kicks in, right? Like once you're clear on why you're doing this, why it actually matters, then it's like the discipline and the commitment of I'm going to show up and do this thing, regardless of how I feel, regardless of whether I want to or not. Mm -hmm but I'm super clear on where I want to be going and why I'm doing this. And so I'm just going to do the thing that's to be done. I love that. I love that. Um, And it's so amazing that you brought up the bumps in the road because I I feel a lot of people um, maybe going into entrepreneurship or even their sobriety journey, um, they have this sort of um, maybe a beginning reason versus like the reason Mm -hmm. they continue versus the reason they um, keep it. Uh, mm-hmm. may evolve and things come at yeah. you differently so and and you change as and evolve as a person as well um, throughout this journey mm-hmm. so um, very early on I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and my mm-hmm. why um, was oh I just wanted to make more money right my my family wasn't particularly well off so I was very money motivated from a very young age um, yeah but then as I got o- older it's like oh it's, this isn't this can't be just all there is. Right. And then I started developing and understanding myself more and understanding that why, uh, more Mm -hmm. and wanting to Mm -hmm. make an impact. And, and I see it very clearly through how you communicate, um, the joy you talk, you, you express when you talk about your work that, uh, Mm -hmm. very similarly, you want to help people. Right. Um, and that's, that's become my why in terms of why Mm -hmm. I'm in advertising, why my, you know, there's really not much ROI in hosting these and editing these myself. Um, but I just want to be able to share these stories to help even at least just one person. Changing your why and evolving it will help you kind of reestablish that foot. So I love I love what you just said. Um, mm-hmm. Sort of, let, let's take a step back. And uh, something interesting piqued, um, piqued my interest with um, what you just shared with me is that let's take a step back and talk about Amy the person. Right. You've shared a bit about, um, you know, you, you've lived in South Africa um, and all the pieces behind you really reflect uh, you as a person, I feel. Um, so maybe tell us a bit about how your um, 
maybe your upbringing or your personal journey reflects in your entrepreneurial or professional journey? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I maybe we'll just start with like the addiction piece because that's sure. like I started drinking and I think the addiction piece and also the resiliency piece. Um, so I... Uh, grew up in a home where my dad also struggled with a pretty severe alcohol addiction. So it was always in my environment um, growing up. And there was also a lot of uh, turbulence, we'll say, and trauma that happened in my family of origin households. And as a result, I very quickly had to figure out how to make it work and how mm -hmm. to support myself, how to take care of myself, um, how to be resourceful and how to just like keep moving forward when there were all kinds of unexpected bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. So I would say my sort of resiliency muscles really started to get a good working out early on in my life. Um, and you know, I can be grateful for that because now I'm so gritty. I'm, you know, tough mm -hmm. as nails and I know that I can handle anything that has come up. And that's a quality that I think is really helpful for me in the entrepreneurial space. Um, so that's, you know, kind of related to personal to professional. Um, and then a little bit about, you know, like growing up, developing an addiction myself. Um, my father actually passed away as a result of his drinking. And that was obviously really, really hard and it was unexpected. Mm -hmm. And emotionally it was uh, devastating. And that really prompted me to look at my own problem with alcohol. Um, and it ended up being, and I know sometimes this makes people uncomfortable when I say it, but I'm just going to say it anyway, because it's true for me. Um, his passing ended up being one of the greatest gifts of my life because mm -hmm. I now am a sober person. And had he not passed away in the way that he did, I wouldn't have had any kind of catalyst to look at the role alcohol was playing in my life. And obviously if I was still on in my own active addiction, I wouldn't be a sober coach. I wouldn't be doing the work that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have the business that I have. I wouldn't have been able to create this massive impact mm -hmm. in the lives of my clients and their families and their communities. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, my personal life has very much shaped um, and impacted my professional life and where I am mm -hmm. right now. No, that's, that's amazing to hear where you've been and how you've come to be here. Uh, it's mm -hmm. funny how um, growing up, when we sort of look back, I, I do this um, all the time where uh, what you just said actually sparked something new in me, a realization mm -hmm. that's um, for me, it was uh, my, my parents' um, maybe unhealthy relationship with money or the unhealthy rela relationship with wanting more money, um, mm -hmm. how that was kind of ingrained in me at a young age and was mm -hmm. the drive for me to um, pursue my career in this way. And um, mm -hmm. very early on, also, again, um, on my entrepreneurial journey, very unhealthy because all I mm -hmm. knew was, you know, working as hard as I can to earn more money. Mm -hmm. And it was very unhealthy. Um and I see some parallels with that. And of course, I can't imagine what you had to go through, but it's interesting to note that um, we latch onto something or maybe we we are attached to some things that um, growing up has shaped us. And I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist, um, but this is, mm -hmm. uh, this is an interesting revelation that you just sparked in me. And, and thank you for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And thanks for sharing that. And I think... Like so much of um, how we are shaped and molded comes from our parents and comes from mm -hmm. our caregivers and they pass on what they know to be best practices. Mm -hmm. And 
um, a lot of that ends up shaping our beliefs and mm-hmm. how we move through the world. Um, and like, that's one of the reasons, right? Like me believing that alcohol was the solution, you believing that you had to like work yourself to the bone to make as much money as humanly possible. Right. Like Mm -hmm. it's like, we operate in our worlds based on these beliefs. And that's why I do so much around challenging those beliefs with clients. Cause Mm -hmm. it's like, is that, was that belief for you through? Did you actually have to work your ass off? I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but you know, do you, did you actually have to work that way in order to like be happy or have the money you needed? Probably no, but Mm -hmm. that's the belief you had and it, it shaped your reality and it shaped your choices and same, same goes for me. And, and that's why I spend so much time on mindset and beliefs because a lot of this stuff is just passed down to Mm -hmm. us. And it's so impactful and we need to address it and we need to actually look at what's true and what's real and like what beliefs are actually ours. Um, Mm -hmm. and then get rid of the ones that don't actually work for us because drinking as a coping strategy or or working yourself to the bone, not great. Right. And not actually in service of our better lives. So, and it gives me so much hope that, um, you know, from the sounds of it, we're both breaking that cycle of, um, you know, what was passed down to us and um, yeah, kind of rethinking it, reshaping it into something that's positive and uh, perhaps uh, passing that along to, um, or for me, my, you know, my kid, um, next generation, or for you mm-hmm. in the sense that using that same uh, mentality to kind of help others break out of that. And I, I, again, I really applaud you for the work that you do. It's it's amazing. And I, I truly believe that um, people like you and the work that you do are making such an important impact on society um, at a large level, but then very concretely at, you know, a personal level. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, okay, I'm good. Before I get too emotional, I'm going to kind of reset <laughs> And let's talk about okay. um, a, a bit about, you know, we talked about the bumps in the roads. Um, how would you say you encourage your clients or you know, to kind of continue flexing that resiliency muscle? Um, or are there any parallels that you see in terms of, you know, how you may um, encourage yourself on your entrepreneurial journey? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, again, I think it goes back to... Um, just being really clear on why, you know, why are you pursuing sobriety? Why am I pursuing building a business? Why does it matter? What's the point of it all? And actually being, just being able to see the bigger picture of our lives, because sometimes when we get in those challenging moments, it can feel all consuming Mm -hmm. and it can just drain us of any hope or motivation for things being different because it just feels so hard. Um, So I think really, you know, having that strong connection to why we're actually doing this and letting that, letting that guide you. Like it's one of the things, it's one of the activities that I do with my clients, you know, early on in our time together, usually session one or two, um, you know, yes. Like, why are you doing this? Great. It's not working for you. You're hungover too much. It's bleeding into your life. Great. But like, why are you actually doing this? Are you Mm -hmm. deeply concerned about, addiction that's run in your family? Are you concerned about health issues? Is your mental health being negatively impacted? Are you worried about ending your life earlier? Because we know that alcohol is terrible for us. Like, so really being super clear on that. um, I think, you know, like for me, that really helps. And also I'm, you know, when I finally found this work and I started to build my business and I got to see the impact that I was having. Mm -hmm. Um, I am so clear that I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And so on the days that feel challenging or the seasons feel challenging, I just remind myself that the challenging times always bring with them 
a boatload of lessons. So I just try to keep my eyes open for what those lessons are. And I just remember that, you know, whatever is going on in this moment is not more significant than the bigger picture of what I'm here to do. And you, you've kind of preemptively answered the question that I want to do, um, uh, to ask you as a follow-up was like, what is your why? And it sounds like you found your why and you are very clear on whom you're trying to help, what type of impact mm-hmm. you want to impart. And it's so encouraging to, because not a lot of people, like um, I, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs. I talk to, I work with small business owners, startup founders, because then there's always mm-hmm. that very surface level of like, oh, I'm doing this because of X, Y, and Z. Right. Yeah. And um, kind of you, if you kind of probe a bit more, and this is something I'm learning as a, as a as a host to see if I can kind of drive the questions a little bit deeper to understand people's motivations or their um, or connect some dots. Um, but yeah, it's interesting um, how you you work with your clients, and I see a lot of I. So you mentioned you're not, you know, you're a great podcast guests and i i think you would be a great <laughs> podcast host as well um uh, maybe <laughs> who you, has you the any... time <laughs> <laughs> no i get it i get it there's there's so much in, like to involved with um trying to organize these um recordings edit them and publish them um which kind of brings me to a thought that I had, you know, what's kind of a challenge that you have with your business that you're facing? Cause I know a lot of people. So for me, um, a challenge that I have is sort of balancing, um, you know, actually doing the work in the business versus, you know, finding new clients and, and kind of keep that cycle going. Right. Um, so are, are there some challenges that you're facing right now? Or, you know, you've, you've, you are, fa- you've faced in the past year, um, talk, talk us through a bit about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, so I'm still a solopreneur, um, which means I am responsible for everything in my business. And I'm currently feeling stretched a bit thin, if I'm going to yeah. be honest, um, because obviously I'm a coach. And so I spend whatever amount of time, however many hours actually coaching clients and doing follow up mm-hmm. and work related to that. Um, I'm a writer. I write regularly and put stuff out into the world. I'm a speaker. So whether it's podcast interviews or going to events and and doing talks, there's that. But I'm also a bookkeeper and a website, an SEO person and Mm -hmm. a marketer and a social media person. And it, it, I'm currently just feeling like the learning curve for all of those is so steep. Like it's tax season. So I'm like really with my bookkeeper hat right now, which like, I hate, I hate that stuff in Mm -hmm. my business. Um, and it takes me away from stuff that I'm doing. So I'm just kind of at the tipping point where I'm going to over the next few months, just be hiring some people to just like take stuff off my plate, like let them mm-hmm. work in their zone of genius so I can work in mine. Like I'm not a bookkeeper. I don't want to spend my time there. Um, so yeah, so it's just like, I'm stretched thin, I need help, but also I, that's a new sort of stage of my business and hiring mm-hmm. people. So that feels a little overwhelming. Like, what do I prioritize? Who do I hire first? What's the most important thing? And that's more stuff I have to learn. So it's just kind yeah. of, you know, uh, it's a lot of, it's, it just feels like a lot right now. And also this is like very typical, I think for entrepreneurs. Exactly. I talked to so many people that have, um, you know, they, they have a calling, like you, you can very clearly tell that they are good at what they do. They're the master of their craft and they mm-hmm. are amazing. So a case in point, it sounds like you are an amazing coach and you're, you're driven and you do great work with your clients. But then when it comes to the other aspects of, <laughs> of running a business, like a lot of people are out of the depth. Like, so for me, like Mm -hmm. I am amazing at advertising and doing Google ads. Like I, Mm -hmm. um, there are very few people in Canada that I feel 
have the same amount of experience and mm -hmm. have dealt with the same types of accounts that I I have. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like I'm good at that one aspect, but like again, bookkeeping, no, not me. Um, yeah, ugh. even though I went to business school, it's just like not something <laughs> I enjoy doing. Yeah. Um, you know, you think the marketing guy is going to be amazing at his own marketing campaign? No, oh, I'm not good at that. <laughs> I'm good at managing yeah. other people's stuff. Or like when it comes to my own business, it's just like I I didn't have a website for my own business for five years, <laughs> and I was yeah. like, oh, I should really yeah. get on that. <laughs> um, yeah, I get that. Which, which is actually a great parallel for a lot of people. Like, for example, um, let's say, you know, me back then, I was a great, um, you know, employee. I was a great son. I was a great, um, you know, leader in, um, in the community that I serve. But I was not good at coaching myself to be sober. You have to kind of recognize, yeah. you know, what your, yeah. what your core competencies are and what you need mm -hmm. extra help with. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think same thing with business. You know, you may be good at, you know, you're a great plumber, for example. You're great at, you know, renovations. But then you may not be good at finding your next client. Maybe referrals are great, but then, um, you know, you got to reach beyond sometimes. Um, that's speed mm -hmm. of which referrals come in. Which kind of yep. leads me to where can people find you? I'd love to, you know, be able to promote um, your work and uh, have have more people uh, find you in different avenues. Mm -hmm. um, so my website is wholeandwell.com and I will spell that out for people. It is H O L. A N D W E L L dot com. So whole and well dot com. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Ms. So M S and then my name, Amy C. Willis. And you can also find me on Facebook by searching Amy C. Willis. Awesome. And can you tell us a bit about the name of the company? What was the kind of thought process behind that? Yeah. Um, so originally I wanted something that really just spoke to the holistic nature of the work that I do. Right. So it's not just about not drinking, but it's not drinking and habits and mm -hmm. training your mind and resiliency building and boundary and self-care and building confidence and building self-trust and all of it really coming at the whole, all of your life and all of the things, seeing how we can get you closer to where you want to go. So I really wanted to take um, a holistic approach and I wanted that captured in the name. Um, and when you say it, it sounds like whole, like W-H-O-L-E, mm -hmm. which is... I think what we're all moving towards, right? We're all moving towards being whole and we're all moving towards being well. Um, and so for me, whole and well really spoke to all of that stuff. I love it. That's so amazing. Um, and I'm so glad to have met you and have this conversation. Thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, me too. Um, so for the, all those who are looking to find Amy, um, I'll have all her um, Instagram, LinkedIn, and website on the sh in the show notes, and I'll also have it on screen. Um, thank you again, and really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. Thank you, Brian. It's been great.